Please welcome our very first speaker, David Gethoff. David? So the whole idea here is that unlike what is taught in medical school, there is a great deal of information published, often double-blind researched, usually much, much more research than there is on any drug because nutrients have been researched for a long, long time and the drug comes out and they just start the research at that point, showing how well and how much importance there is to the use of different foods and different qualities of foods and different nutrients separately as supplements because sometimes the foods don't have as much as we need in both the treatment <coughs> FDA doesn't like us to use that word, it can't be published in something, but I can certainly talk about it, in the treatment of disease, and there are a lot of health professionals that use, a lot of doctors that use food, cho uh, food changes, food choices, uh, nutrients in the treatment of diseases, uh, as well as simply helping the body to heal itself. All right, so the huge health benefits of switching to better foods and the knowledge of which foods belong in this category of better foods is not currently being taught either to physicians or to dietitians. Um, I'm not going to get into the dietitian thing. You can go to my website. You can read some stuff on that. There's some MP3s on that. But because of money, which we all know is a big bad thing out there that we wish we had more of. It can't be that bad. Uh, but it ends up controlling things so that what we are taught and what we therefore know as true is often not true, but it's what they want us to know as true. So therefore, physicians and dietitians are not taught what the current research shows having to do with either food choices or nutrition. Are corn and potatoes healthy or harmful? That's pretty easy. They're two of the most harmful vegetables on the planet. We'll go over that a little bit. Are beans beneficial or harmful? Possibly both, depending on quantities, how we prepare them, and how much other foods we have with them. And is salt beneficial or harmful to health and blood pressure? And what the largest amount of research studies show is not what is being taught in medical school. So animal protein, good or bad? Uh, one of the things that's very, very important in scientific research, and which is rarely accepted or looked at, is multi-generational research. I don't think anybody in here wants to be healthy or healthier for the next 10 days, or for the next two weeks, or for the next two months, or depending on your age, for the next 20 years. I want to be healthy, have my faculties, have my memory, be able to do the things I want to do, have enough energy to do that, until whenever it is I die, which hopefully will be in my sleep, I just won't get, wake up, you know, my spirit will go elsewhere. And at that time, where if I have my druthers, I'll be between 100 and 200, uh, I would like to not have been in pain before then and not been any, on any drugs before then. Uh, B12, B12, vitamin B12 is extremely poorly absorbed in plant-based foods, and that's the reason that a lot of vegetarians have to get injections of B12 which automatically means that vegetarianism couldn't have been a really good long life thing unless they're eating enough meats in what they call vegetarian. Because vegan is none, and vegetarian is just as bad as carbohydrate. We don't know what it means. There are 15 million different types of vegetarian. So the healthiest vegetables are free of starch. So we have a bunch of vegetables that are free of starch. Broccoli and cauliflower, cooked or raw, various types of lettuces, which have been given a bad name that they shouldn't have. Lettuce is not a nutrient devoid food. There are a lot of nutrients in lettuce. Uh, spinach, and of course that includes all the other leaf vegetables. We've got kale and we've got Swiss chard. Uh, all bell peppers, except the green ones, because we do better if we eat fruits and vegetables that are, funny word that we all know, it's called ripe. And when something ripens, it gets more nutrients if it ripens on the plant, not if it ripens being gassed in the truck on the way over. So that's the reason to, if you can, frequent your local markets or grow stuff yourself and leave it on the plant until it gets ripe, not ripening off the plant. The only fruit that I know, we often think of it as a vegetable, the only fruit that I know that ripens correctly off the plant is avocados. They don't ripen as well on the tree, you have to pull them off. Otherwise, you aren't on there. And the reason I say not green is because there is no such thing on this planet, I mean there are other planets in the solar system, there's no such thing on this planet as a ripe green pepper. Every single variety of pepper, whether it's sweet, whether it's hot, whether it's small, whether it's long, if you leave it on the plant until it gets ripe, it is no longer green. Onions and garlic are fabulous, both as a vegetable or as seasonings, 
and they both contain a huge amount of beneficial nutrients as well as a lot of sulfur that helps the body. Uh, tomatoes, celery, carrots, eggplant, you'll get a whole bunch, Brussels sprouts, numerous seeds sprouted, I don't care whether we're talking about mung bean sprouts or broccoli sprouts, all the sprouts are fine. The only thing that I want people to stay away from is the soybean unless it's been fermented, which we'll go over a little bit. Coconut and palm kernel oil, very, very healthy oils. They've been used in populations that are devoid of heart disease for centuries. And we get told that they're bad because they're loaded with cholesterol. That's a statement based on ignorance. Cholesterol is an animal molecule. Coconuts and palm kernels don't feed. They're young. They are not animals. Therefore, there's no such thing as coconut milk. There's no such thing as soy milk, almond milk. They don't feed their young either. Milk comes out of the nipple of a mammal to feed its young. But we are allowed to mislead you because they haven't passed the right laws. So there is absolutely no cholesterol in those. Yes, they are animal fats. Excuse me. Yes, they are saturated fats. Saturated fats are not a problem unless we saturate them. Eggs have been given a bad name and they really don't deserve it because eggs are very, very healthy food. What I usually tell my patients is the only way you can make an egg much, much, much less healthy than it was before is by throwing the yolk out and eating the white only. That's the only way you can do it because the most nutritious part of the egg has been proven in numerous research studies to be the yolk. The yolk has more milligrams of protein per ounce of yolk than the white does. It has all of the essential fatty acids that there aren't any of in the white. It has all of the fat soluble nutrients that don't exist in the white. And why do we call it a white anyway? It's the clear. It's only white if you cook it. The ones that I crack into my smoothie and my raw milk in the morning, they're never going to get white. But that's the only way we can hurt it. And the better they're raised, the better off we are. Barley is the slowest converter of all the grains. When I say converter, I'm talking about how fast its starch converts into glucose or blood sugar in your body, causing an increase in sugar and a decrease in immune system and a higher risk factor of diabetes, heart disease, and cancer. So we want things that convert more slowly. The slowest converter in the sugar is the nutrient which in nutritional biochemistry we are supposed to get our sugar from. That's fats. Nutritional biochemistry, we know that the body, the human body, is supposed to get its level blood sugar throughout the day from the slow change in your body with all of your enzymes breaking it down from fats into sugar, not from starches. But we have learned, our body has learned to do it from starches, and if we switch over, sometimes we even have to do it slowly so the other enzymes will be produced. But heirloom quality barley, I only say heirloom because that means it hasn't been hybridized, they haven't screwed it and made it worse. But heirloom quality barley, barley is the only grain that turns into sugar as slowly as beans do. So if somebody wanted to have a bowl of a hot cereal some morning, instead of having a bowl of oatmeal, if they had a bowl of barley, it would be way healthier than the oatmeal unless you're allergic to barley. And if you want to make it healthier, yeah, I tell people, figure out how long it takes for your barley to cook to the consistency you like it. So let's say somebody says, oh, 25 minutes. All right, so after 15 minutes, crack in two eggs per person, mix it up, let it cook the rest of the time, and now the fats and proteins in the egg, which will barely change the flavor at all, will make that food much healthier for you. And instead of being hungry three and a half hours later, you won't be hungry for six hours, which is what should happen if you eat a healthy meal. Uh, puffed and popped grains turn into sugar faster than almost anything else that's been studied. So if you think that spooning sugar out of your sugar bowl and putting it in your mouth might conceivably not be the healthiest thing to do while you're sitting at the table, you better stop eating puffed rice and popcorn because that's what you're doing. When you puff or pop a grain, you speed up the ability of the body to break it down into sugar many times over. Yeah, if you load it with butter, it'll slow it down a little bit, but it won't make it go away. All right. Uh, nuts are one of the healthiest foods you can have unless you're allergic. Anytime you react to a food that somebody tells you is good for you, all bets are off. If there's a food you know you react to, don't eat it, even if somebody tells you it's good for you. So if you react to either nuts or a specific nut, then it's not a good snack for you. But otherwise, nuts are a very, very healthy snack. So let's take a look at some sweeteners. The harmful natural sweeteners include sugar, honey, molasses, maple syrup, fructose, and high fructose corn syrup. Does anybody here know exactly why high fructose corn syrup has been shown to be so tremendously damaging now in like two or three dozen studies? 
Okay. It's not because it's from corn. It's not because the corn wasn't organic. It's not because the corn was genetically modified. It is 100% because it's high fructose. Fructose has been shown to be the single most damaging natural sweetener ever studied. And when people go, but it doesn't make sense. Fructose has been around for all the time we've been on this earth. Yes, but unless you lived in the tropics, small number of people did, and of course they were outdoors burning it all off doing things. They weren't sitting in front of a computer or reading all day. But nonetheless, that was a tiny portion of the planet. Everybody else that wasn't in a tropical climate was able to eat fructose. Remember, we're talking about a long time ago. No planes, no boats, no trains, no refrigeration, no stores. So you could only eat it when you could find a fruit on a tree or on a vine. What percentage of the year are fruits available naturally before we hybridized them and made early season varieties and late season varieties? Just the stuff that the planet gave us. Depends on how long the growing season is in that part of the planet. So if you're not in the tropics, in most places fruit are available between 6 and 12 weeks. So after 3 months there's no more fruit. We're told, eat more fruits, they're good for you. So we're getting more fructose than any other indigenous population ever got, except the ones in the tropics that were able to burn it all off and be outside. So fructose is a major problem. Well, so what? Why? Why fructose? Because fructose has now been conclusively proven all by its lonesome self to cause type 2 diabetes because it causes cellular insulin resistance and to cause non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Fructose does that. And high fructose corn syrup is the second highest way that fructose is used in industry. That's the second highest of all the things out there. We'll have the highest in a minute. So now we have even worse sweeteners. Equal, which is aspartame, NutraSweet, another word for aspartame. Splenda and sucralose, which are the same thing. Sucralose is a chemical, Splenda is a trademark. Saccharin, amino sweet, which is the new name for aspartame to try and make it sound better because it's made out of amino acids, it is. Neotame, which has been found now to be even worse. And in red, agave nectar. Agave nectar is the highest fructose sweetener on the planet. High fructose corn syrup is 48 to 50 percent pure fructose. Agave nectar is 52 to 54 percent pure fructose. So the only thing worse for your health than high fructose corn syrup is agave nectar. Sorry to give you that and blow all the things you knew, but that happens to be a fact. <laughs> So the good ones, so we put them in green, are stevia, the uh, alcohol sweeteners, xylitol and erythritol that don't really have alcohol, are also acceptable if they don't cause loose stool, and yacon syrup, you need to look into that book, which you should have a picture of then also, is the uh, almond flour cookbook that I like best. Uh, these are two videos on the damaging effects of sugar, sweet suicide and sweet fire, Excellent ways to train different people. Sweet suicide is for everybody. Sweet fire is also for everybody, but is designed for people with a lower reading level. So it's very, very good. Sweet misery, a poisoned world. And while science sleeps, a sweetener kills are two of the best ways to educate yourself or anybody else on aspartame which is an extremely cancer-causing, neurological disease-causing, making holes in the brains of people, causing seizure disorders in lots of people. This is the reason I don't like the word carbohydrates. Everything on this slide is a carbohydrate. Cane sugar, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, uh, a tangerine, a couple different grains, some lettuce, they're all carbohydrates. So if somebody says, don't eat carbohydrates, what are you telling them not to eat? Are you telling them, don't eat uh, Brussels sprouts? Uh, don't eat a carrot? Don't, don't eat broccoli? Don't eat cauliflower? So don't use the word carbohydrate because everything up there is a carbohydrate. So the important diet changes are drastically reduce or eliminate starches, sugars, and alcohols, I call them sabotage foods, switch to the healthiest fats and oils, and never use fat or non-fat versions, uh, low fat or non-fat versions of a food. Nutrient deficiencies are everywhere. This, and again, you'll have this slide, I call this the basic six. Uh, Dr. Jeffrey Bland went looking for the research studies that are taught to dietitians that if you have a well-balanced meal of adequate calories, you don't need a supplement, and he couldn't find any. Every single study that's ever been done to prove that a well-balanced meal of adequate calories covers your bases for vitamins and minerals, every single study found multiple deficiencies in vitamins and minerals. That's something that's still being taught today that has no research behind it. So I have people that often go on extra vitamin A, extra vitamin C, 
extra vitamin D and they have to do the vitamin D test to make sure that they get the level where it's supposed to be. Extra vitamin E from a specific company which will be on your handout so you'll know which one I use. Almost all of the vitamins, uh, if they're water soluble, need to be taken twice a day, especially the multi and extra trace minerals.